To test this, I propped up a high school photograph of my father-in-law on the table. I put a piece of masonite down here to paint on. I sent a small mirror at a 45 degree angle. And for the first time in my life, I did just what Vermeer may have done. I picked up some oil paints and a brush. In Vermeer's camera, this would be a projection. A lens is projecting this image. Um, but to show the actual mirror painting process, we're using a photograph here. You can see that there's a reflection, and then there's my, my canvas down here. And right at the edge of the mirror, I can see both things at once. I'm just going to apply paint and either darken or lighten the paint until it's the same exact color. And at that point, when it's exactly the same color, the edge of the mirror will disappear. All right, and I'm an idiot at this. Um, I have done this process exactly twice in my life before. What I'm doing is I'm moving my head up and down so that I can see first the original and then my canvas. I'm looking at both things at the same time. Right on the forehead, you can see that they match because you can't really see the edge of the mirror. That's, that's your clue that you've matched the paint exactly. It's not subjective, it's objective. I'm, I'm a human, a piece of human photographic film at that point. What you're doing here is you're essentially blending? Yep. I am either darkening or lightening the paint that's already on the surface. You aren't tracing any lines, because there are no lines. Yeah, that's a characteristic of the Vermeers that makes them unusual, is that there weren't lines, and there, there weren't any lines drawn underneath the paint either. 